my presentation and uh, uh, as i already said that uh, a lot of work has been done in terms of uh, this aspect by dr usha already so i think i'll be comfortably placed of course there could be some amount of overlap what she has already said so what i'll be alluding to alluding to is that are women with diabetes at a greater cardiovascular risk possibly yes but unfortunately it has it has always been thought that cvd is primarily a disease of men and it is a breast cancer cancer which commonly is perceived as a greater issue for women that is not so our cvd is the top killer of women in europe well this is european society evidence uh, 2015 which said that it is 51% of deaths which are uh, being contributed by cvd in diabetic women while breast cancer only contributes about 3% of overall mortality in setting of type 2 diabetes so when it comes to heart diseases men and women are not equal definitely and as dr usha very rightly said there is a need for a gender specific at least an addressal of this issue so what i'll be moving through this talk is first to address the risk of cvd in women why to discuss cvd in diabetic women is it that important do we have an evidence to say that natural protection in non diabetic women for cvd it gets lost moment you have diabetes and what separates women from men in cvd management and towards the end one or two slides that there is a need for an evidence based guidelines specific for women let me go through the facts about cvd risk in indian women which is very very high 3 in 5 women in india are at a high risk of cvd as early as 35 years we are not talking about post menopausal post 50 years but even at the age of 35 3 in 5 women are at a much higher cardiovascular risk it almost accounts for 15% of global burden of heart diseases when we talk of overall global global cvd risk and the largest group of women at risk of cvd are actually between 35 to 45 and almost 70% of five housewives or maybe for that matter even working professionals over the age of 35 are at a very great risk for developing cvd so let's see why women with diabetes are at a greater risk most important thing is that almost 50% of people living with diabetes they tend to be again women moment they have diabetes they had a near 50% greater greater risk for cvd as compared to men they lose their normal female protection from cvd what dr benny very rightly alluded to and 3 to 7 times there is more likely to develop or die of chd as compared to without diabetes so at least women with diabetes and women without diabetes are not alike ihd in stroke still represents the major cause of mortality and morbidity in women women are more likely to be severely disabled moment they have a stroke and of late there is a growing interest for gender specific cardiovascular medicine and at least a special what i said a special attention has to be paid to the issues of cardiovascular disease in women which is again major contributor so if you have look on the major causes of death for females it is cvd almost accounting for more than 70% of overall morbidity and mortality and if you talk about diabetes per se it comes on third or fourth or fifth number so it is primarily the presence of cvd in per se diabetes female which is contributor of overall morbidity and mortality what adds to cvd risk factors in women is of course per se hyperglycemia dyslipidemia typically what is seen in indian patients presence of comorbidities like hypertension obesity with increased visceral fat a huge amount element of psychosocial stress and of late we are seeing a rising trend of smoking unfortunately in indian women also and also alcohol intake is also going up which further adds to cvd risk and as i said all of them many of them tend to be physically inert as compared to male patients and there are put poor eating habits so what's a little as i said is left behind in the family is only for the female for most of the times it is true so they hardly consume too much of vegetables or fruits and there is hardly any antioxidant intake which could reduce cvd risk in these patients so if you have look on the glycemic continuum and cardiovascular disease we know that it is insulin resistance but once it sets in almost remains constant it is a growing beta cell dysfunction with it sets in the stage for development or onset of type 2 diabetes and so goes the postprandial hyperglycemia in the beginning and subsequently there is a rise in 
fasting sugars also we know micro microangiopathy has a linear relationship in terms of uh, duration with onset of type 2 diabetes while macros complication follow a uh, ticking clock hypothesis and it may be almost 5 to 10 years prior to the onset of type 2 diabetes in fact i have one paper of mine with dr madhu and dr sanjay will where we said that it seems to be more like a continuum and we said there is a dirty dozen it is not simply insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction it due to diabetes and we hypothesize in another paper which i have with my daughter dr asta and dr shalini where we said that it seems to be a continuum of micro as well as macro as a continuum so it should not be viewed upon as a distinct entity that micro will start only after the onset of the disease and macro starts much earlier it seems to be more like a continuum which is based on our almost uh, 20 year evidence from our own center so when you talk about hyperglycemia insulin resistance and cardiovascular disease we know per se hyperglycemia increases ros reduces nitric oxide production there is advanced glycation product formation which leads on to acute as well as chronic endothelial dysfunction and contributes towards vascular inflammation especially in the presence of hypertension and dyslipidemia insulin resistance per se also worsen diabetic dyslipidemia and leads on to macrophage stimulation and dysfunction and there is a pro thrombotic stage which then further increases the risk of overall atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk in these patient this slide you have already seen by dr usha nurses has studied almost a 20 year data between 1976 to 1996 one woman almost 1 lakh patient with age between 30 to 55 moment there is a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes overall risk of cardiovascular disease goes up by almost 3 and if they have presence of diabetes at baseline obviously the risk is almost 5 times as compared to someone who is not having diabetes even if you compare the same gender and we know there is a very strong dynamic relationship between persistent post prandial hyperglycemia team and cardiovascular mortality may be honolulu heart program decode study pacific and indian ocean study or fungata study or white hall study or diabetes intervention study which highlighted the moment there is a increase in post prandial sugar more than 200 mg which is a cut off for these patient there is going to be significant increase in cardiovascular morbidity and mortality and similarly an estimated 10 year fatal cvd risk by current or attained age in type 1 diabetic patient and when you compare men and women it again it isn't seen once you compare them versus non diabetic population there also there is a very high risk of cardiovascular disease in patient with type 1 diabetes also as per this uk data which has been seen well there are definite gender differences in cvd if you have uh, a look on annual number of adults having diagnosed heart attack or fetal coronary artery disease by sex and age as the age increases especially women those who have pre menopausal protection moment they are close to 50 or more than 50 in the post menopausal phase they are almost parallel in fact overall cvd risk becomes much higher in women as compared to men now important question is whether that natural protection in non diabetic women for cvd which is there moment you have a diabetic woman gets lost and why it happens i think it is important to understand the physiology of estrogen on cardiovascular system moment you have estradiol it works through two mechanism one is an um, uh, endogen estrogen receptor dependent pathway another is an independent pathway estrogen dependent pathway is primarily through er alpha and beta receptor it stimulates messenger rna there is going to be a signal transduction cascade which gets formed there is a early response gene formation and then it leads on to smooth muscle proliferation inhibition and cardiac fibrosis growth inhibition also and relaxation so there is a reduction in overall risk of getting uh, cardiovascular risk so these effects to estrogens are mediated and it leads on to an anti vasoclusive cardioprotective actions in most of the females so cardioprotective effects of estrogen are either indirect effects in the form of increase hdl reduce ldl or reduction in ldl real oxidation or there could be direct effects which could be genomic or non genomic effects genomic effects could be increased cardiovascular production of nitric oxide to endothelial cells and smooth muscles and also there is an inhibition of vascular smooth muscle and myocardial growth and remodeling which happens through genomic pathway 
in non genomic well there is going to be an increased platelet nitric oxide production which results in reduced platelet aggregation and there is a increase endothelial cell nitric oxide also which actually prevents cardiovascular mm -hmm. events in these patients and we know there is going to be an inhibition of l channel calcium currents also which results in reduced vascular vasoconstriction and that prevents most of these cardiovascular events in female those who are not not postmenopausal or those who are non diabetic so if you are talking about women without diabetes especially at a younger age there is going to be a much lower risk of cvd because of higher levels of protein and axin a1 on the surface of their white blood cells which prevents the cells from sticking to blood vessels and causing vascular damage so this protection gets lost moment you have diabetes or someone who is in a post menopausal phase why diabetic females are not protected as i told you it could be because of per se hyperglycemia increase insulin resistance especially in females those who have a lot of obesity and visceral fat there could be an over production of free fatty acid because of uh, 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 you may say insulin resistance into the adipose tissue together it contributes towards increase inflammation increase ros reduced production of nitric oxide nf kappa beta markers and dage markers are on the higher side and that induces vasoconstriction in these females moment they have diabetes so there is a very strong hypothesis for detrimental estrogen responses in diabetic vasculature in a healthy woman you have a favorable i told you estrogen receptor alpha and beta which are distributed in a very healthy way in a very very favorable way so it reduces inflammation it reduces overall vasoconstriction but in the setting of type 2 diabetes these become unfavorable and there is going to be an increased vasoconstriction and inflammation contributing towards increased cvd risk in these females now what separates women from men in cvd management again i said there are huge differences huge disparities in cvd between men and women it could be because women are under prevented they are less likely to be identified as a high risk because the common perception is that they might have a breast malignancy or a ca endometrium or cervical cancer they may not be it may not be appreciated that they are even at a greater risk for cvd moment they have diabetes or once they are post menopausal they are less likely to be enrolled in various secondary prevention program again most of the time these diseases remain under diagnosed because symptoms may be very very vague something like back pain neck pain jaw pain nausea vomiting which is usually attributed especially by females to gastric symptoms and all that even palpitation disease pnd may be missed many times and hardly they are referred for a cv diagnostic test with as compared to male patient again they are more like their symptoms are more likely to be under treated because these are being attributed to symptoms of non cardiac diseases and as i told you they are less likely to be referred to uh, higher centers for definite percutaneous maybe angiography angioplasty or maybe a stent therapy or even bypass intervention and most of the time you don't have enough evidence this is what i was uh, talking about that because they have not been represented in many various clinical trials so the positive effect of drugs are also not being uh, sort of highlighted in women patient then they they are more likely to have more comorbid conditions like obesity and they are moment they have acute coronary syndrome it is likely that it may worsen or there could be even adverse outcomes like bleeding from invasive procedure simple ptca or a uh, conventional heparin therapy might have or someone is speak in the king in the background please in a phone kare ne just yeah so even even the risk of reinfarction heart failure stroke is higher in in these females those who have one event and a short and a long term mortality rate after mir also greater in these patients so there are definite sex related differences in the cardiovascular system maybe in terms of anatomy also like dimensions are smaller even if you adjust for age and race their ventricle mass may be lesser their ventricle wall thickness their left atrial dimension left ventricle and diastolic dimension and vessel size are different as compared to male patient then i told you there are hormonal influences of estrogen and progesterone which dr beni very nicely alluded to which have huge influence on overall cardiovascular disease manifestation and outcomes women patient they are likely to have higher pulse rate and faster ejection fraction higher which are higher and their stroke volume could be less by almost 10% as i told you 
so their pulse rates are higher and they also have lower hematocrit so their oxygen carrying capacity may be on the lower side moment you have a myocardial ischemia this may be a bigger uh, handicap and they are also at a greater risk for arrhythmia because they have longer corrected qt interval and shorter sinus node relaxation or recovering time also so i think it is high time that we talk about overall risk of cvd in women and possibly address to an issue of evidence based guidelines specific for women i'll not be going into the details of our all guidelines dr usha talked about 2021 but as early as 2014 aha and acc said that manage women with same pharmacological therapy and as aggressively as a men patient in terms of a high risk of cvd in these patient and early invasive strategy is going to be very very important in these patient of course women with low risk feature may not undergo very aggressive or early invasive treatment but whosoever is symptomatic either in the form of acs or an event they must be at, uh, sort of managed very very aggressively and myocardial revascularization which is a reasonable uh, option even in pregnant women should be definitely addressed to so carry home message is that cvd remain the leading cause of mortality in women there is huge evidence to that women with diabetes lose their normal female protection from cvd and had nearly 50% greater risk of cvd in different studies whether it was in dab study own data or data from west there is both bias as well as true physiological differences which play an important role not only in overall increase risk of cvd but also in mortality in this women diabetic patient especially in the post menopausal phase so there is a need to tailor prevention or treatment strategies more effectively to improve the care of women in terms of overall cvd risk thank you very much for your patience